What is going on everybody? So today we are checking out the first ever Honda CRV hybrid. Now, if you're new to my channel, this is going to be a full in-depth review. I take my time on these reviews. I love being thorough. So it's gonna be long, but I promise you it's gonna have every single detail about the exterior, the interior, and obviously we're gonna take it on a drive. And we even have a RAV4 hybrid to test against this thing. But let's go ahead and check it out. All right, you guys, so let's go ahead and take a look at the first ever Honda CRV hybrid. Now, this car is pretty cool because the hybrid you can get in every single trim. Now, the starting price is going to be around $27,000, and that's basically going to be for an LX trim. And then as you move up into the ranks, this is going to top out at like $37,000, just every single option. And that's basically what you're going to see as is right now. So this is going to be the touring hybrid. It's going to be all wheel drive, and um, it's just going to have every option to the gills. Now, uh, this color is really cool. It's like this grayish blue, and it looks so, so good, especially on this overcast day. It really gives it more of like that grayish tone, and man, is it a good looking color. All right, so as we move to the front of the CRV hybrid, there's two main differences to tell this apart from the full gasoline variant, and that is going to be these five little LED strips down here this blue symbol located right here so you guys can hopefully see that blue ring around the honda emblem and that's pretty much going to be it you guys um, i do like this updated styling with uh this little portion down here it kind of gives it like a wider meaner stance i mean it's a crv so it can't really be like that aggressive but at the same time it does look better than when this generation first came out i think the subtle cues do help this stand out a little bit more than it did before now obviously you have full led lights on here you have an led daytime running light which looks great at night all the lights are super bright super crisp and it really adds to the expensive feel of this car now as we move along the side of the car i actually like this little hood dent right here it kind of reminds me of like ford edge but for some reason it just works better with this styling and then you are going to have your hybrid badge located right here now in terms of wheels you do have three wheel options you're going to have a 17 an 18 and then you have these 19 inch wheels which i think look pretty good um it's like an open five spoke design and uh i think these wheels fit this car uh, i don't think that there's any need to have any sportier of a wheel i think these are just a good fit and then you're going to have us uh, like some black cladding here this chrome strip running down here which i'm not a huge fan of for me it's a no-go but for most people they will probably like the you know expensive touch that that adds to the car now as we move towards the side profile and like the rear quarter panel view um this is probably my favorite angle of the crv i love these rear tail lights um, at night they have a really cool led uh, it just looks really good it almost reminds me of like volvo uh, and then you are going to have this just really uh, thick area here and basically it's going to be so big here because you have all this storage space and you have all that leg room back here which we'll get to once i go on the inside of the car and then here in the very back there is one big difference back here and that is going to be the hidden exhaust pipe and then you have this slightly different uh, rear area located right here so i'll give you guys a closer look at that and so you can actually hear the engine running right now just very subtle and then you have your badges back here that are going to say hybrid touring and all-wheel drive all right so getting into the crv hybrid now the one thing I'm not a fan of on the Touring is this wood right here. Uh, I think it could look a lot better with maybe a slightly different trim. The wood just doesn't look very convincing in my personal opinion. But the materials are all pretty good. It's soft touch up here. Uh, this is all going to be really soft touch. You've got some stitching there. Very soft touch here. Obviously your window mirror controls, two memory seat settings, storage space right down here. Now you're going to have your seat controls here off to the side. This is real leather, so unlike the RAV4, which does use like the Syntex or whichever leather that they use, this is going to be real leather. Uh, so it's got a real soft feel to it, real supple. We have perforations here in the middle, and it's going to run all along the middle of the seat. But 
but let's go ahead and hop in and we'll check out the rest. Okay, so shutting the door. Nice solid shut. And then here's a wider look at the cabin for you guys. Okay, to start the car, it's very simple. Start button's gonna be right here. As long as your foot is on the brake, you're gonna hit that to start. And that's it. And obviously because it's a hybrid, extremely quiet when it starts up because the gas engine usually doesn't kick on. So starting with the steering wheel, love this steering wheel. It's just really high quality. It feels just really solid. Um, it feels like leather wrapped steel. It's just this really sturdy, chunky steering wheel. And I, I really enjoy it. I think it's a uh, really nice quality. Now you do have this kind of like uh, plasticky aluminum piece here with gloss black, which is fine. Uh, you're gonna have some stitching located right there. Over here to the left, all of your media commands, and over here to the right, all of your cruise control settings located right there. You do have adaptive cruise because obviously this is the touring trim. Now these paddles aren't to shift because here in the hybrid you do have uh, regenerative braking. The awkward part is that this paddle, even though it has a plus, is to lower the level of uh, regen, and this is to increase the level of regen. Automatic wipers, automatic lights with your fog lights right there. Now coming to the screen, it's the same screen you would have in the light current generation CRV. The only difference is right in the middle if it'll focus. Let's see here. There we go. So you have an EV specific or a hybrid specific uh, gauge cluster. That's really the only difference. Everything else is pretty much the exact same. And even this readout here is showing 532 miles and I've already driven 45 minutes just to get to this spot to film. Uh, so that's very, very impressive. Now that MPG was us flooring it a lot, so that is not extremely accurate. So uh, I do apologize about that. But yeah, it's pretty, it's pretty interesting. And uh, the one thing that was pretty cool is just, you know, how seamless this whole thing works. And of course, I'll talk more about that in the driving part of the video. But continuing on within the car, you don't have a head up display, which I do wish you would have here. Uh, soft touch all up here. You've got your vents here, speaker right up there. This touch screen is, is okay. It's really not my favorite. Um, the native system just is not great. It's quick, it's easy to use, but it just doesn't look very good. Uh, and it feels very outdated already. Uh, you do have Apple CarPlay, uh, and so that does help. But other than that, um, there's really no need to use this on a daily basis. Set everything up the way you like it, and then utilize the Apple CarPlay and things like that. But it is nice that they finally brought back the volume knob. Uh, you do have dual zone climate control, heated seats for both outboard passengers, though you don't have cooled seats on this uh, model now this is going to be new right here these uh, different drive modes with sport econ and EV and This is also specific to the hybrid is this push-button shifter So you're gonna have your obviously your reverse neutral drive and then park Once you throw it into neutral you have your backup camera, which is gonna come up and it's not very good quality It looks decent. Uh, it's definitely better than what you have in like the RAV uh, But just ever so slightly and then you have your guidance lines uh, Which are going to turn with the steering wheel and I do like that quite a bit Electronic parking brake, automatic brake hold located right there. Uh, as we move down, you do have differences down here as well. So uh, you have USB ports, which are now going to move, be moved to the front, uh, which is a lot easier, especially if you're on the go and you have to plug it in. It's just an uh, easy reach. Uh, obviously, wireless charging pad located right here. Cup holders. And then I love this new redesigned center armrest. So you have your armrest right here, which obviously I can rest my arm on. It's extremely plush and it feels great. Two arms can easily rest on there, but you can lift it up, pull the tray back, then flip that up, and you have so much space. Uh, you can even fit probably like a purse or something like that in there. It's pretty, uh, it's pretty deep, and I do really like that. It's very nice. Lockable glove box over here. Auto dimming mirror, sunglass holder, but you also have this little guy, so you can see in the back. I can see my wife back there. Hi, honey your lights located right here and then you are going to have your moonroof nice overcast day today in arizona and then obviously your vanity mirror right there pretty much it for the front let's go ahead and check out the back seat and see the room okay so hopping in the back seat of the crv hybrid now first of all i've got a great amount of space back here my headroom is fantastic i have at least three and a half 
inches above my head. Uh, I'm six feet tall and I have this set to where I would sit. So I've got about another three to three and a half inches of knee room. My feet room is excellent. It slides right underneath the seat because this is nice and high. Uh, and this is really interesting. The floor is really low. So if you guys can see that there, just a really low floor. So you can easily fit a third person here, zero issues. I have two USBs back here. I'm gonna have uh, vents back here as well. Now the door, when you shut it, super, super solid. Uh, really nice shut sound. Uh, you are going to have a good amount of storage space in the door pockets. Uh, the door materials feel pretty okay. You have soft touch down here, hard touch up here. The armrest is nice and soft, which is great. Now folding down the middle armrest, um, these cup holders are fantastic. So I love cup holders that are in the armrest as opposed to the ones that just pop out. Um, now you do have a good amount of section here on the side so I can rest my arm there. Uh, once again, the cup holders here are nice and deep so that should secure your drink leave pretty nice. Um, and then in terms of the seat, I believe these do recline so if I, do that it's not much that's the reclined setting and then the not reclined setting so it's very small but even that gives me an extra inch it feels like of headroom so uh, if you're above six feet tall you should fit back here no problem but yeah uh, it's a great place to be the seat materials are fantastic plenty of room uh, if you are an adult or if you're a child and yeah that's pretty much gonna sum up the back seat let's go ahead and check out the trunk space okay so coming to the back of the CRV hybrid now the tailgate on here is like super slow. It's my one knock about it. Now, obviously powered lift gates are great to have, uh, but this one is just, it just takes a while to go up and down. But if I step underneath here, six feet tall, I have headroom. I'm not bonking my head on top of this, which is great. And then usually with a hybrid system or anything that involves a battery, uh, you have less space. So the good news is that I'm not going to have a shortage of space back here. So same thing you would get in the normal CRV full gas powered touring or just any model. Um, and this load floor is very low. So what that means, like let's say if I have a heavy box here, I don't have to lift it as high, uh, which is nice. And then once you have it here, it's a pretty flat load floor. Now, obviously you can fold these seats down, but because we have this cargo cover here, I would have to remove that first and then fold the seats down. Now underneath here, uh, you are going to have this little area here and it's kind of like a tire repair kit. So you don't have like any storage space per se underneath that. Uh, I can double check. And now, yeah, you do have this. You could potentially use it for something, but most likely that will not be the case. Now, uh, you do have lights over here off to the side. Uh, you're gonna have these handles here that I can just pull that handle. That's gonna fold my seats down just like that, which is pretty cool. And yeah, it's a good amount of space. Obviously, it's a very practical SUV, but let's go ahead and check underneath the hood and see this new powertrain. Okay, so coming into the hood of the Honda CRV Hybrid. Now, this is essentially the same powertrain you get from the Accord Hybrid. So this is a Atkins and Cycle two liter four cylinder, and that's going to be paired with an electric motor setup. Now combined, it's gonna make a total system output of 212 horsepower, 232 pound feet of torque. Uh, now, obviously that torque is going to come in between zero and 2000 RPM. So the electric motor is going to provide just that instantaneous torque. And that torque is also best in class. So the other cool thing is MPG. Now, the best thing about a hybrid is the fuel economy. So this is getting about 41 miles per gallon in the city, 35 on the highway, 38 combined. In my test driving here, the 45 minutes it took me to drive to this spot, I was getting about 38 in highway MPG. So it's already proven to just effortlessly get better than what Honda has quoted here. Uh, now, obviously, uh, this is going to be all wheel drive. So it's going to have a mechanical connection unlike the RAV4, which is going to have the electric motor placed in the back with no mechanical connection. So we're gonna test that out, see uh, if it's more beneficial or less beneficial. And let's go ahead and get on the road and see how it does. All right, everyone, so driving the Honda CRV Hybrid Touring. Now, this is my first time actually driving this generation CRV. So, uh, this is going to be a very, very fresh perspective. Now, I have driven the current generation RAV4s, uh, so I feel like I'm going to have a good baseline here. Now, right off the bat, if you've never been in this generation CRV, the first thing you're going to notice about this over the RAV4 is the quality is a good amount better. Everything just feels a lot better 
more sturdy. Um, like the steering wheel is nice and chunky, uh, feels great. Uh, all the materials are great. Everything's so close to you. It's just an easy reach. I barely even have to fully extend my arm. I'm not a fan of the native system on here. I suggest just CarPlay uh, to do it that way, but the native system really is not my favorite. Uh, visibility in here is great, and just all the switch gear feels fantastically. Even just blinking over, it's just like a rock solid click, and there's no bounciness in the uh, in the stock. I mean, it's just little details like that that really portray that overall sense of quality. Now, let's talk about how this drives because it drives so well. Now, I'm in econ right now and just, you know, tootling along in EV mode. Uh, it feels great. This really stays in the electric portion of the power band more so than the gas, um, a significant amount more. Uh, but obviously when you floor it, you hear that gas engine kick on and it's got a good amount of punch now once again that was in econ mode so if I were to switch to sport and then just lay into it I mean really they feel about the same you're, you're not gonna be able to tell a noticeable difference if I'm being just completely honest what is this guy doing <laughs> um, brakes are good actual good brake feel um, and you do have regen in here, so I can use these paddles to adjust my regen. Uh, to do more, you're gonna hit the minus sign, which is super backwards, and to do less, you're gonna hit the plus sign. Um, if that bugs your OCD, it really bugs my OCD. I wish they would switch that, but you know, no big deal. But you have about, let's see, one, two, three, four settings for regen, but even the max setting is nowhere near what you would get on like a full EV. Uh, you do have full EV mode here, and man, it's just, it's a great ride. It feels like a very sophisticated ride. Um, I can easily take this on a long trip, easily. Uh, this feels quieter than the RAV. Um, and overall, I really do think the quality on here just feels more robust. Uh, I think that's the best way I can describe it. And of course, you know, you guys go out there, drive it yourselves. You don't have to take my word for it. Um, obviously, Honda's not paying me to say any of this stuff. It's just legitimately how this feels now um we are going to test this against the rav so honda does does have a rav4 here so uh we're gonna test that we're gonna see how this all-wheel drive works uh so far it's been raining and when i floored it those few times there's no noticeable wheel slip so from a stop i mean that was all the way to the floor and there's zero wheel slip so uh i do like this all-wheel drive system it's very effortless the transition between gas and electric is so seamless. Um, it's like this thing is running off of like double whipped cream. It's so just buttery smooth. And uh, I, yeah, I really enjoy it so far. Okay, so hopping directly out of the CRV hybrid into the RAV4 hybrid. Boom. So let's see the key differences right here. I'm just gonna see what I noticed right off the bat. Okay, so. Normal drive mode right now. Just make sure, push for normal. Okay, and I'm just gonna give it some acceleration. So right off the bat, I can tell you that the CRV pushes back quicker. So as soon as you floor it, there's a quicker response from the electric motors, and it feels a lot torquier than this does. So it pushes you back more than this. It's not a significant amount more, but it is a noticeable amount. Um, in terms of driving, I want to say there's more road noise in here, but um, I'll let you guys be the decider of that. So I'm going to attempt to put both videos side by side um, and just let you listen to just what it sounds like in the cabin.
whenever you accelerate, there is one noticeable difference, and that is like the feel underneath your right foot. So when you accelerate in the CRV, you don't feel as much like almost like graininess coming through the pedal, if that, if that makes sense. That's the best way I can explain it. Uh, this, you can almost like feel the engine through your right foot, and it just feels a little bit more grainy. Um, now, these aren't really negatives against against the RAV4. These are just simply observations that I'm making. So there are some people uh, that may like that tingle going through your right foot. There are some people that don't want to feel that at all. They just want the more linear feel. And I do think that the CRV has the more linear feel. Um, I'm in normal, and the CRV really had even a more uh, just right at the top of the accelerator. Um, just linear push than this does. Okay, so if I throw this into sport and then accelerate, it still takes a little bit to kick to kick down. I mean, I floored it and it still took just a bit. Um, but you know, these aren't sports cars, so once again, these aren't knocks against the cars. These are just simply observations. And this does ride a teeny bit rougher than the CRV. And really, these two cars, they're, they're throwing punches at each other all day long, uh, and. I can't honestly say one is significantly better than the other. They're just two equally good packages. But for my personal preference, I think I do like the um, the Honda's smoothness and the Honda's ride quality a lot better than this. But when I'm doing things like this, like let's say if I'm you know on this rocky road, it seems to the RAV seems seems to compose itself a little bit better. But yeah, but because of the noise coming in, it feels like you have a little bit less dampening in here. Uh, so you hear more of the engine, you hear more of the road noise, you feel a little bit more of the, the bumps and the jitters underneath you. Uh, and honestly, I do think that the CRV feels just interior quality wise, it just feels a little bit more robust. Everything feels like it's built just a little bit more in a sturdy fashion. Um, but I mean, the RAV's still great. Uh, Honda definitely, you know, did its homework whenever it built that CRV hybrid because it eclipses this in some ways, and then in some ways, this is still um, just a really good vehicle. But I do think that the CRV is just overall, it feels like a more premium version than this. All right, you guys, so we're going into this little like sand pit area. And this is really to test the all-wheel drive to kind of see how the all-wheel drive handles. Uh, so, we're in the RAV4 first. I'm trying to let you guys know if I feel anything. So we got traction kicking on. And you can feel it kind of doing all kinds of weird stuff. So you hear all the brake grabbing. And traction's on, so I'm just kind of letting it, the computer do its thing. This is supposed to imitate like icy conditions or something like that. And man, it just does not sound good at all. Oh my gosh. But I mean, it, it does it, it gets the job done. Now we're gonna hop into the Honda. Okay, so now into the CRV. We're gonna see how this does. I should probably adjust this real fast. Okay, so CRV. Give the same pace. Okay, so right away, the biggest difference is the brake grab isn't as dramatic as it is in the Toyota. It feels a lot quieter and it feels a lot more controllable. You're not sliding around as much as you are in the RAV. Uh, you pretty much point in the general direction you wanna go and it goes, which, um, I'd say that for a family, like let's say driving in snowy conditions, this would feel a lot more confidence inspiring for sure. But now we're gonna hop into the full gas version to see the difference between that torque delivery from hybrid and full gas. All right, buckle in full gas version. Now, I do like the fact that the new one has the push buttons because this is just an eyesore for me personally. <laughs> I just don't think that looks as good, but I like the style in the new one. So uh, the biggest difference here is this is full gas. So uh, the power delivery is gonna feel a lot different.
Okay, so here's the biggest difference. So with the hybrid, now obviously you've got that um, you know, 232 pound-feet of torque right at the bottom. So with this, this is the turbocharged engine. So uh, what that means is if I'm trying to ease onto the throttle and just really trying to have control, uh, once that turbo kicks in, all of a sudden I'm, I have a little bit more than I need. And so I think in that sense, that's what makes the hybrid superior, even compared to its full gas sibling. But yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed that. It's pretty much gonna wrap up driving impressions for the new CRV. So guys, to end the video, um, I think that the CRV hybrid is a pretty good first attempt with Honda in terms of throwing that hybrid powertrain into the CRV. Uh, the build quality in this car is incredible. Um, compared to the RAV4, like I said, this feels just like a more robust vehicle. It feels like it's built just a little bit tougher. And this hybrid powertrain is just buttery smooth, extremely linear. And the powertrain alone gives you a heightened sense of just quality just because of the way uh, it does exactly what you want it to when you ask of it. Uh, so in that aspect, I think this is a great hybrid. And obviously, if you love the CRV, uh, this is going to be the more uh, economical choice when it comes to fuel. And it's going to be the more powerful and just easier feeling drive experience. But thank you guys for watching. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. Be sure to subscribe and hit the notification bell because YouTube will not alert you if you don't. And I'll see you guys in my next review.